I'm Mrs. B and I'm an art teacher and I created the Art Life YouTube channel because I really wanted to help inspire everybody to get arty at home, in the classroom or wherever you might be. Now this task is suitable to the youngest of artists. I simplify some drawing strategies into simple shapes. We'll talk about some geometric shapes and have a go at creating a really fun bird picture. At the end, we'll do something a little bit wacky with our work. <laughs> and I hope you really enjoy the task today. Please make sure while you're here, you like, comment, and subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel because it really helps me out to create more videos for you. Enjoy. that's asked me about my pregnancy. I'm doing really well. I'm very tired. My back is very sore, but I'm plug plugging along. Uh, I have about two months left until our little baby girl joins us. So I'll keep trying to make some videos for you in the meantime, but it is getting a little bit harder as I get bigger and bigger. <laughs> but thank you for all those people who are so lovely and have been asking me about it. For today's lesson, you need some pretty minimal materials. Really, all you need is a piece of plain white paper, You'll need a pencil to draw with and then something to outline with. That can be as simple as a black texture or some sort of pen or marker that just makes your work stand out a little bit. Now, you also need some coloring materials. I'll use textures today, but crayons will work, pencils will work, anything that adds color. I'll also offer you a really fun option at the end, which will require you to also have a glue stick handy and some scissors. So let's set up our craft station and we'll get started on this fun drawing task. Now, today I have a piece of A4 paper, but I don't wanna work on A4 paper. I actually wanna work even smaller today, just because we want the whole entire piece of art to be filled with color. So if we're working on a really large scale, it's gonna take a really, really long time. So with your A4 piece of paper, we're gonna turn it into an A5 piece of paper just by cutting it in half. So I've just folded little indications for me there to show me where to cut. You might want to get a, an adult to help you with that bit, but it doesn't need to be perfect at all. One of these pieces of paper will be our good copy and I'll help you with that in a minute. But the other piece we're going to just use as a bit of a practice piece of paper for now. So today our lesson is all about And shapes can come in two different types. You can have geometric shapes or organic shapes. And there is a big, big difference. Now a shape is really just a line that connects together. So that's a shape. If the line doesn't connect, like that, well, that's a line. So those two points need to connect together to make it a shape. Now, a geometric shape is the type of shape that probably comes to mind when I say shapes. A geometric shape are the ones that we learn in maths. They often have straight sides, like a rectangle or a triangle. Sometimes it can be a circle. These are the types of shapes that are geometric. And metric is a word that we often use in maths, so that helps us to remember. Now an organic shape is a little bit more random, kind of like this one I've drawn here. It's really just a line that connects together. And organic shapes are often quite random and sometimes can even remind us of things from nature. My favorite one is a big arty paint splat. So they're the two different types of shapes that you can create. And today we're gonna to focus on this one, the geometric type. Now, we're going to practice drawing our geometric shapes as neat as we possibly can. But this is our practice piece of paper, so it doesn't matter if we make a mistake. So with a texture or a pen or whatever you have in your hand, I'd like you now to have a go at really concentrating and drawing the best circle you possibly can. Now circles are probably the hardest, but if you do this, well, I kind of rushed that, didn't I? didn't turn out to be a great circle. So what I'm gonna do is do a dot and I'm gonna to try to slowly 
work my way around and join up my dot like that. Which one do you think turned out better? Probably this one, hey? And that's because I slowed down and I really concentrated. So I'd love to see you do the same thing. Now we're gonna practice a triangle. A triangle is tricky, but here is a bit of a tip. I'd like you to do a dot at the top, a dot down here, and then a dot over here. Can you see where I'm going with this? Now connect your dots with a line as straight as you can. Ta-da! Now triangles can come in all different sort of shapes and sizes and things like that, but to try to make a nice equilateral triangle by nice straight lines there, that would be awesome. Okay. Another one I'd like you to do is try to take up, is we're going to do a rectangle now, but I'd like you to try and do a rectangle that's super, super long. So I'm gonna take up the entire bit of my page, try to draw a straight line. If you have a ruler, that'll probably help. Then I'm gonna do another straight line under it, slowly working, and then connect them together. That's a really long rectangle, isn't it? Now, with any extra time, you might just choose to draw any other shapes you know, but when you draw them, I'd like you to Try to get your lines nice and straight if they need to be straight. Try to connect your line together so it becomes a shape. And just do your best, which often means slowing right down and focusing. There. Good practicing everyone. Well, now that we've practiced our shapes, we're now going to use some basic shapes, put them together to create an image. Now, if I just said to you, draw three birds. Well, some of you might be like, oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, what should I do? Uh, I don't know. There you go. There's a bird. You might not know exactly what to do. And some people might actually freak out by that request. But we're going to slow it down. We're going to break it down. And we're going to use these simple shapes that we already know how to draw and put them together to create an artwork or an image. I have my A5 piece of paper here. I have my pencil to draw with. And you guys are gonna have a go at drawing step by step the way I show you. However, I'm not gonna use my pencil just so that you can see my work a little bit better. I'm gonna go straight ahead and use my fine liner. If you feel comfortable doing that, you can do that. However, you can't rub out a fine liner, remember. So if you prefer to draw everything in a pencil first, I suggest you do that and then go over it with your fine liner. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is do that super long rectangle again. All right, I'm gonna do it about here. Now start from one side. If you have a ruler, feel free to use that. Oh, and it's gonna take up the entire paper. So I'm gonna do two straight lines close together, straight as I can and turn it into a rectangle by connecting those two straight lines, just like that. How'd you go? All right, now we're going to do three ovals. Now an oval is just like a circle, but it's a little bit longer. If you end up doing circles, that's completely fine as well, but you need as much space as you can to make three. So I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna do my first one nice and big, Working really slowly. There we go. One. I started in the middle because now I know how much space I have either side. Two. Three. There we go. Looks like three eggs sitting on a log. If we put it that way, it looks like a traffic light but we're gonna turn it into something different today. All right, what we're going to do now is draw a whole bunch of circles. We're actually gonna draw six altogether. Two for each of our ovals. Now, circles are tricky, but if you've done an oval, you can do a circle. We're gonna do two circles next to each other. What do you think they are? 
Remember, slowing down will help us to connect our lines together and make our work as neat as we can. Cool. I'm gonna do six more circles on the inside. Wow, that's a lot of circles. <laughs> All right, the next shape we're going to practice doing are some triangles. Now remember a triangle is the one with the three points like this. So we're gonna use that strategy here, but we're actually going to do an upside down triangle. Now, if it helps you, you could turn your paper upside down and that might make it a little bit easier. So we want the point going toward the rectangle. So I'm gonna do the one in the middle. I'm gonna do three dots, one, two, three. And connect those spots There we go, you see what that is? So the same thing for the other guys. Nice straight lines as best you can, guys. Awesome, well done. We're gonna do some more triangles, but they're going to be the long tails that come down from here. I'm gonna draw this one with a gray lead just so that you can see. So I'm gonna do my point here, my top point there, my next one here. Next one here, I draw lightly with my pencil. Okay. Cool. Now, because this rectangle is acting as a bit of a log or something that these birds are sitting on, their tails are behind it, which means these little bits here, we don't need these bits. Whatever is on this rectangle here, we're not gonna go over that. I'm just gonna go over the bottom bit. It's still a triangle, but part of it is hidden behind our rectangle here. So I'm gonna get my eraser now and get rid of these bits so I can show you exactly what I mean. We're moving house at the moment, so all my art supplies have gone missing, <laughs> or they're in a box. So I'm using Sadie's smelly, I think it smells like grape <laughs> unicorn rubber. <laughs> Can you see what I meant by that? Their tails are sitting behind this log. Our three birdies are looking so cute and they're pretty much done, except to make them look a little bit unique. So this is your chance now to use your drawing skills to maybe add some details. They don't have to be the same as the ones I do, but what you could do is add some patterns to the tail. You could give your birdie some wings somehow. You might give your birdie some little feathers coming out the top of his head. So this is just a fun little drawing part that you might choose to add some of the lines that you know, mix it up a little bit so each of your three birdies look different to one another. And if you can, try and make them look a little bit different to mine. That means you're using your creativity because you're not just copying what I'm doing. This one's going through a crazy hair day. I'm just going to do some semicircles coming down like this. But if you can think of a different way, you might choose to do that. Now, when I'm drawing, I'm connecting my lines. Can you see like that? I'm not just doing this. I'm making sure that these lines connect neatly. And that just means that my work gets finished off really well. You might choose to give the wings a few patterns as well. But it's just adding some few finer details. I'm always about adding detail you might have noticed and I'm going to color in my black these lower circles to make them look like big eyeballs so there we have it three birds sitting on a log using some simple geometric shapes 
to draw them. I hope you've gone really well with our first step. The next step is just using your colouring materials now to add as much colour as you can. Now it's very important that we stay inside the lines so that our artwork can make sense. And a big part of this task, and the reason we're only working quite small today, is so that you have the time to colour in the entire artwork. So I'm saying one, two, three birds, plus the background behind them needs to be coloured in today. And I'll show you why in a moment. The amount of effort you put in will definitely show at the end result. I always find the longer something takes me or the more effort it takes me, the prouder I am of my work because I feel like it's my best work. So I encourage you to do the same. Really take your time with this part. Mix up your colors. Your work does not need to look like mine at all. I actually hope your work looks different to mine. There, now you might have noticed I used my practice piece of paper underneath, so I didn't get any textile on my bench top, which you might choose to do the same as well. So I've finished my coloring in, and I know that I finished my coloring in because I have colored in every single part of my artwork, including the background, except for the eyeballs, of course, which remain white, which is fine. But I just did a red background. You might choose to do a blue one for the sky or even abstract kind of patterns. It's completely up to you. I just thought red was nice and bright. So after you've done that, make sure you pack up everything. I hope you're very helpful and make sure you pack up everything that you use. I'm gonna take some time to pack up and I'm going to find another piece of paper. I actually have a colored piece of paper that I can glue this onto just to make my artwork a little stronger and I'll explain why in a minute. Lots and lots of glue on the back of my artwork and I'm now gluing it onto a piece of colored paper. If you don't have a piece of colored paper, you could even choose to just stick it onto another piece of white paper. Just means that our artwork is a bit thicker and we're gonna need that for this last step. Now, a lot of glue is really important. Get right to the corners, making sure it's stuck down really well. Okay, there we have it. Cute little birdies. It looks like a finished artwork. Well, I guess it is a finished artwork, but we're gonna do something a little bit interesting and different today to turn it into a game or an activity. We're actually gonna turn our artwork into a puzzle or a jigsaw puzzle. And the way we're gonna do that is actually cut it up. It's a little bit scary when we've worked so hard, and if you choose to, you can just keep it the way it is, especially if you're super proud of it. But I'm gonna show you how to turn it into a puzzle. So you could even give it as a gift or spend some time with your family putting your very own artwork puzzle together. What I'm gonna get you to do is turn it over. Then you might choose to use a ruler for this. It's completely up to you. But you're going to section your work into about eight to 10 different pieces. Now, if you do any more pieces than that, they're gonna be really, really, really tiny, which means the puzzle's going to be super tricky and you might actually lose some pieces, which we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is just draw some lines on the back, nice big ones. Again, you could practice your shapes. I'm gonna do some triangles. That's one section. Two, three, four, just doing straight lines, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten might make sense for you to write the numbers on each of the pieces as well to make sure that um, you've got all the pieces that you need. Now we're going to do the scary thing and cut up our beautiful birdies. So say bye bye birdies, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, because I'm about to chop you up. I'm going to cut as neatly as I can so that these lines As straight as can be cutting along these lines that I've drawn you don't have to do straight lines you could do wobbly ones you could do sort of jigsaw looking ones oh look Here we go, I suddenly have my very own puzzle that I made. But for now, this is my finished puzzle and I'm gonna see if my daughters can put it together. know in the comments below if you decided to be really brave and turn your bird artwork into a puzzle and if you enjoyed the task today as well. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.